for these numbers uh, down 13 and a half percent the challenges what is the biggest challenge for you managing right now in the business in coronavirus good morning gentlemen and uh, thanks for having me the um, well challenges are obviously several I think on a high level, it's it's to manage the crisis as we have it, uh, but also have the eyes a little bit further down the road to see what impact uh, this thing uh, and these events have on us as an industry, as a society uh, down the road, so we can prepare properly to come out stronger on the other side. So um, both short-term and long-term uh, is the challenge for me right now. Johan, what we're trying to get our head around is how consumer behavior is evolving because of the coronavirus and arguably now because of the collapse in oil prices. What are you seeing in the numbers in terms of trends? Well, the oil prices, I would say, obviously adds to the uncertainty overall, right? But it doesn't have a short-term impact negative on the industry. It will come down the road as well. The consumer behaviors now are, are clearly driven by, in our case, in Dubai, where we're based, or in the UAE, uh, it's a full lockdown, right? So people don't move at all, so they are home. Uh, and people are home with pretty good fixed services in the country. It's, it's great speeds, great uh, penetration, which means people move away from mobile into fixed. And here we have uh, an, an industry which we say is resilient. Yes, it is resilient, and we will get through this. But it also reveals some weaknesses in our, in our overall business model. Uh, and a couple of examples would be the fact that we cannot really monetize the increased demand on, on data. The way we have structured our, our propositions, our pricing, not only here but across the world, uh, leaves a lot of space for people to, to uh, use data without paying, of course. And the other weakness, I would say, in our, in our business logic here is that we have not been CapEx efficient. Uh, luckily, I would say that now, because we can deal with the increased demand uh, without a lot of extra CapEx short term. That showed also that we have been inefficient with our CapEx, I would claim. So, uh, you know, we're dealing with it, we're learning, uh, and I think uh, through crisis we'll, of course, learn a lot and get out uh, stronger, hopefully. The, the, the company is adapting now uh, and learning quickly, we'll, we'll get through this. Johan, you, you say that you're not able to monetize our increased demand, but of course that comes down to pricing by the deliverer, i.e. you do an Etisalat. So as we come out the other side of this, can consumers here in Dubai expect higher pricing if you want to be more efficient with what you've already offered to us? Well, we, I think we're all really looking how we yield our business models, and eventually they will end up in different propositions and, and, and smarter pricing. It uh, doesn't mean we should increase prices uh, across the board, of course. It means that we should be smarter on pricing. Where people are, they should be able to consume our services. And we have set ourselves up through the years, not only here but across the industries, in a, in a, mo in a model that doesn't really uh, cope uh, well with increased demands in terms of yielding. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. So we need to rethink our business logic, business models, uh, which we are, uh, which we have been doing. But I think this crisis will will accelerate our thinking. And, and on that note, I think also looking forward a bit for our industry uh, here and elsewhere, this is definitely uh, going to accelerate a few things, which I think will be good eventually when we look back that we took digitalization fully, right. uh, fully through and uh, stepped up. Automation uh, as part of that, of course, uh, will, will kick in in a much bigger way. And I also think this, for the people that have a strong balance sheet like ourselves, uh, we should not compromise on our 5G uh, plans, uh, rolling out the 5G networks to deal with the, the new type uh, of traffic movements sure. to be more dynamic, resilient and secure in our networks and also more cost efficient with the, with the new yeah. technologies coming. So. Uh, we you, need to look you talk that about a changing landscape. If I could just, if I could just interject here to, to sort of get a, a bit more behind some of the points you're making, the restrictions on voice over IP, it's been frustrating for me personally, and I know a lot of the people I interact with, it's part of the public discussion here in Dubai. When are those restrictions going to be removed, and what's your view on that? Look, we have, uh, during this crisis, uh, with the help of the government and regulator, uh, also opened up a lot of collaboration tools, uh, which is de facto voice over IP, video over IP. Uh, so most uh, global platforms, collaboration tools are working. 
Uh, we also have some local uh, voice over IP apps that are open up and working. So it, it is there. It's just that it is a, a regulatory matter, which is really above my pay grade when it comes to will it, will it ever open up fully or not. That is for someone else to comment on. But we see as we have it all opened up some of these collaboration tools and VoIP apps that it's, it's working well. Uh, and people are consuming, of course, uh, a lot of data on that. Johan, it's good to see that you're getting on board with, with the messaging that, that, that there's certain decisions above one's pay grade in the region. Right, let's talk about uh, <laughs> the, the, the issue uh, in, in terms of what happens with, with CapEx and defense. I want to know what's the most defensive thing you've done as a CEO. I see other global CEOs cutting dividends, drawing down credit lines. You talk about being in a good position. Give us a sense of what you've done to shore up do or what you will do in regards to CapEx. Just take me through the thinking of defensive plays as the CEO in this crisis. We, we've got to play both defense and offense here, obviously. And, and given the strength that we have on the balance sheet and basically debt-free at the moment, uh, uh, we have the flexibility and, and the luxury, if you want, to take a long-term view. And that's what the board has decided to do. And we have a very... Um, uh, I would say, aggressive transformation program for the company over the next few years, and that we will not compromise on. Having said that, uh, we need to play defense on mitigating the, uh, the uh, drops in revenues, which, by the way, we have not seen the full effect of yet. We have the worst ahead of us in terms of our numbers, and we say that in our report. So we need to mitigate on the cost side um, defensively here and now, which we're doing, and that, of course, is never never a fun thing to do, but in order to give us the flexibility to come out stronger, we also need to do that. So that's the defensive play we're doing now, uh, cutting the, the costs where we can without compromising the long-term growth.